Well, praise the Lord, everybody. I just want to say thank you once again for joining another episode of Bridging the Gap. I'm your host, Pastor Nate Brozier, and uh, I'm excited to just have the opportunity to speak into your life just for a moment. Um, like I said, I'm going to be very thoughtful about trying to watch the time because I want somebody to listen to these or watch these if you're watching these on YouTube. They only have like 20 minute time frame. So if you will, go ahead and share this to your broadcast or your, your social media platforms. Let me say it that way. Twitter, Facebook, wherever you um, have social media presence, go ahead and share it to a friend so they can maybe uh, hear this that this could be a word of hope for somebody. Uh, but without further ado, let's get started. Today I wanna to simply talk to you on this particular topic. Fear is not an option. Come on, go ahead and just, just put that, if, if you're gonna share it, go ahead and put down hashtag fear is not an option. And so I really wanna dive into the spirit of fear in the origin, or shall we say the genesis of where fear began. And, uh, and so if you have your Bible, turn with me to the book of 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 5 through 7. And this is where Paul is reading, uh, 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 talking to Timothy, actually sending him a letter. And he reads in verse 5, we're just going to jump down and then we'll get into the most familiar text of this line. He said, I remember your genuine faith, for, your sh for you share the faith that first filled your grandmother, Lois, and your mother, Eunice. And I know that same faith continues strong in you. This is why I remind you to fan the flames, the spiritual gift God, has gave, God gave you when I laid my hands on you. Look what he tells him, though. He says, fan the flame. We understand the concept of fanning a flame. When you're starting a fire, we understand that to keep it going, it needs oxygen. You need to get it going back, flourish, make it either blow or have like a, you know, I've seen people use those, uh, those, uh, those air blower units and to kind of keep the fire lit and ignited. And I like, I like how he tells Timothy this. He says, this is why I remind you to fan into flames the spiritual gift God gave you when I told when I laid my hands on you. And then by, and then verse uh, seven, which is the juice or the meat of this whole particular uh, podcast, for God, go ahead, get that in your spirit. For God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power love and a sound mind in the King James and New, in New Living Translation it reads self-discipline but of power love and self-discipline or sound mind that is verse 7 here you know, I, want, I want to point out some things about options and like I said I'm not going to be very long I want us to understand the options that we are always given on a daily on a daily uh uh, matter that is uh, every day we have options we get up in the morning what do we have options what am I going to wear today what am I going to what am I what shoes am I going to wear if you're if you're that person who has multiple amount of shoes uh, what clothes am I going to wear today you know I'm one of those guys I love cologne and I have one two maybe seven bottles on my by my, my my fireplace mantle where in the morning I decide what I'm going to wear and so these are options. Some days I may feel old school, do my eternity. Some days I may feel new school and do uh, one mil 100 million. And then, or I may do, uh, you know, just fill in the blank. I got options. I got options. Options in life that we're dealt with also. What restaurant are we going to go to? We asked the question, like even tonight, before I even got on this podcast, my wife sends me a text message. What is the options? What are we doing tonight? Where are we eating? Uh, where are we going? So there's options that we are dealt with. Hotels. Me and Isaiah are planning to go to the Michigan-Indiana football game on the 14th. And so I've been looking at options of hotels that I would want to stay at because the game's at noon and I'm not trying to drive up four hours to get over there. 
And so we have options that are given to us. And so we have restaurants, hotels. What store am I going to go to to buy my, my children clothes? What store am I going to go to to buy my groceries? You have options. Walmart, Meyer, Payless, Aldi, Ruler. That's just Muncie. I'm just naming some Muncie ones, but you may have other ones. Costco, you may have uh, Sam's Club. You are given options daily. And we have movies. What movie are we going to watch tonight? You know, I don't know about you, but this is how it works in my world. Me and Jessica will be sitting here. Sometimes nothing's on TV. Our day is just, we got home from work and we're sitting there and we'll say, what do you want to watch? She'll want to watch something like a Hallmark movie. I have no desire to watch that. And then I'll want to watch some exciting drama movie, maybe like a Jack Reacher or, or the Taken type of movies. Those are kind of my go-tos. I, I love those kind of movies. And I'm an old school documentary guy. I love documentaries. Let me tell you, let me say it one more time. I love documentaries. Jessica gets so mad at me. She hates when I watch them. She says they're boring. Every once in a while, she'll watch them with me, though. But we're given options, and we have to sometimes compromise. I don't necessarily compromise on, on uh, watching Hallmark movies because I can predict them from the beginning to the end. But sometimes I'll go watch a movie that's Hallmark-ish, and you know what I'm talking about. You kind of understand. The, it's a, we would call those chick flicks, or some people call them that. You know, I will cave in and I'll watch my Hallmark-ish movie. So we're given options on a daily basis. You and I are given options. What are we going to do? And, and what is interesting here in the spiritual life we're talking about, why is it that we choose fear as an option? We don't do, we don't do certain things. We don't make specific decisions or we, we, are, we are crippled or hindered because of this one option that was never intended for us to have as an option. And we allow fear to determine what we will or will not do. That is very interesting to me that even, even the writer here, Paul is telling Timothy, listen, fan that faith, fan that gift that's within you. And then he had to make that statement because there was something obviously deterring Timothy from doing what he was called to do. And then Paul makes note that, listen, Paul, or Paul, Paul says, listen, Timothy, God has not given us the spirit of fear. So what was happening maybe at that time, Paul may have been making decisions based on, or excuse me, Timothy may have been making decisions based off of fear. Like you and I, we, we tend to not do the thing that God has called us to do because of fear. Well, who made fear an option? It wasn't God. God said, here's what God did say. He says, I have not given you the spirit of fear. Well, what is fear? The, the word fear in Greek is uh, dilea, which means timidity, fearfulness, cowardice. I'm not doing it. I'm scared. I don't want to do that. I'm so, I don't know what people are going to think about me. I'm, I'm afraid I'm going to offend people. I'm afraid I'm going to do, if I do that, then this will happen. Timidity, fearfulness, cowardice. This is what Paul is telling Peter, uh, uh, Timothy. I have not, God has not given you this spirit. This is not coming from me. So where does it come from? It comes from the enemy, the spirit of fear. Think about fear now. Fear is an option that Satan wants us to take a hold of. Why? Because he's an accuser. He's a liar. I say this so often on this podcast. He is a liar, an accuser of the brethren. All he does is tries to twist things to get us to believe lies. And then he begins to tell things to us or speak things to us. And again, I'm not saying that Satan is omnipresent, omnipotent, all power. But listen, we have fears and we allow the enemy to, to lie to us and convince us that we are not good enough or we are not capable. 
And so we begin to live those lies out and we accept that option. Unfortunately, many of us do. I've been guilty of that, even in my past. Uh, afraid to take that step of faith, so to speak, because of fear trying to cripple me. But Paul is telling Timothy, God has not given us the spirit of fear. Delia. He's not given us the spirit of Delia. Delia. But what? That was never an option by God. But what were the options that God give man here? He says, for I have given you the, uh, but of love, power, and of a sound mind, or power, love, and of a sound mind, or sound, uh, uh, discipline, self-discipline. So look at this. Where's the word power mean? Power says, in the Greek, as many are familiar with this, dunamis, which is where we get the word dyna, dynamite or dynamic. He's given us, which in, 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 in meaning is strength, power, and the ability. Inherent power residing in a thing. Ooh, come on, let that sink. I'm that thing that he says, I have given you power. I have given you dunamis. I have given you this strength, power, and ability, inherent power. I'm giving it to you. You inherited this power through the Holy Ghost. I have given you this spirit that we may be able to tread upon scorpions, put our foot upon serpents, put him under our feet. He said, I've given you power, strength and the ability. And then we look at the word love, which means agape here, which means affection, goodwill, simply love, benevolence, brotherly love. Listen, we shouldn't be in awe with our brothers. We shouldn't be in awe with our, our neighboring church down the road because maybe the title on their church says Presbyterian or Methodist or Nazarene or Pentecostal or Apostolic. We are not in competition with our brothers. We are not in competition with our sisters. And so this is what God is saying. I have given you love. I have given you this agape love. Listen again, what does the scripture say? I have not given you the spirit of fear, but of love, power, and of a sound mind. This is what God has given to humankind. Mankind, me and you. And if we are spirit filled, we've received Christ, then therefore we take on these inheritance. Power, dunamis, abilities to do things that we can't do on our natural physical being because this is inherited basically to us from God. This is powerful stuff. And love, to love those, brotherly love, to love those that are, are considered to be unlovable that are hard to deal with, that are pains in our neck. But God has said, I've called you, I've, I have given you this affection and goodwill, this brotherly love. And last but not least, a sound mind, which in this, I'm gonna to try to pronounce this, sophronimus, sophronimus, means self-control and moderation. He said, I've given you dunamis, I've given you agape, and I've given you sophronimus, which means power and strength, affection, goodwill, and self-control. Listen, God doesn't put more on us than he knows that we're not capable of accomplishing. Some of us, we, we think, well, God has called us to do this, but then we're like, well, no, he's not called me. Listen, God's not schizophrenic. He doesn't change his mind. If God spoke a thing, it shall and will come to pass. We've just got to trust in his word and accept the options that Christ has given us, that God Almighty has presented to the body of Christ. What is that? Love, power, self-control, dunamis, the ability the inheriting bill, the inheriting, I can't even say it, the inherit power, the affection, brotherly love, goodwill, benevolence. He's given us those options, but he has not given us the option of fear. So fear is never an option. 
How are we guilty in this area? Here's how we're guilty in these areas is because we'll begin to accept things or, or even to the point, well, now that, you know, God, I've heard people say this out of their own mouth. Oh Lord, the enemy, the enemy is not going to stand for this. He's when, when something like this is about to take place, be aware the enemy's going to come in and try to destroy seeking whom he may devour. Listen, we know that's the antics of the enemy, but that doesn't, that doesn't mean anything. He can say or try and accuse and do whatever he wants, but guess what he cannot do? He does not have dominion over me, nor you. He does not have authority to to call things against me to to, to destroy my well-being. Listen, God says, I have given you my spirit. And and, and he said that we, we should be able to tread upon serpents and scorpions and destroy. They're under our feet. Listen, saints, saint, it's not the other way around. We got to be aware and be leery and scared of what the enemy can throw our way. But we need to rest assured that if God is for us, come on, you fill it in. Then who can be against us? That means no devil in hell. That means no enemy, no spirit, no, no spirits, make it plural can hinder us from anything. Look what Christ, look what the Bible says. What can separate us from the love of Christ? Nothing, no thing can separate us. We have been given a full authority and dominion on this earth. These are the options that we are given. So it's now is the time for us to walk by faith. So walk by faith and not by sight. Stop walking in fear. Fear is not an option. Fear's never been an option, but Satan wants to put it in the midst or the enemy wants to convince us of these lies that we want to accept fear as an option. Listen, I'm here to tell you today, fear is not an option for you. You know, when you see it on your test and you got multiple, you got multiple um, uh, questions on, or you got questions with multiple choices, and they'll say A, B, C, or D. You know, sometimes it'll say, what is, you know, or uh, 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 answer D could be A, B, and, or A and B, or something like that. Some of us have accepted that fear is an option. Listen, it's not. And I'm here just to speak this word of encouragement. I'm going to close here. I'm here to speak this word of encouragement. These are your options. Love power, and self-discipline, self-control, sound mind. These are your options, not fear. It's time for us to shut the door on the option that was never assigned to us anyway. Come on, I want you to see it by faith, feel it by faith, believe it by faith, that the door of fear is being shut right now. No more will you give it access. I know some people struggle with this more than anything. Me and my wife has had conversations about this. My children, friends, loved ones, church members. We, some people battle with the spirit of fear more than others. It almost to the point it cripples them, debilitates them, tries to prevent them from doing the very thing that they're called to do because somewhere in their minds they begin to believe that Satan is equal to God Almighty, and he's not. He's defeated. He's defeated. Come on, let that just sink in. He's not equal. He's defeated. We are triumphant through Christ Jesus. We are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus, and fear is not an option. Come on, I want that to be ringing in your spirit. Maybe you're driving down the road right now listening to this podcast. Scream it right now out of your car Fear is not an option. Come on, you may be cleaning your house. You may be doing something, walking around. You may be at work right now. Come on, write it down somewhere. Put that on your computer and tell yourself, write it on there. This is how you would write it. Nathan, remember, fear is not an option. Come on, let that sink in and I want to pray for you right now. Father, in Jesus' name. I pray that the body of Christ will begin to recognize who they are 
and that they are not a whipping post of the enemy. Fear has never been an option. It was definitely not created by you because you even said in your word, uh, the spirit of fear is not of God. Because you said God has not given us the spirit of fear. So we know this has never been an option. And so right now, by faith, we shut that door of doubt, of fear, of, uh, of the lies that the enemy has told us. And we will never open that door again. We shut the box of fear. We shut the mouth of fear that it will not triumph. It, it won't, it won't deter, be a determining factor if I'm going to do something or not going to do something. Fear, we shut the mouth of you right now. And God, we speak speak right over the people, over the airwaves, over this podcast, that faith will arise and that fear will never be an option. Father, we give you, we give you, we give you praise right now and we speak peace over everyone that is listening to this podcast. Let it ring in their spirits when they turn this off. Fear has never been an option. Fear is not an option. When they're about to make some big decisions in their life, make them hear this podcast. Fear is not an option. I will not make these decisions based off fear, or I will not allow fear to help me make this decision to do or not to do, because fear is not an option, Jesus. Now, Father, we thank you for this word. We thank you. Now, let it resonate in their spirits as they go their way, do their routine of life. God, be with the people that are watching and listening. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. Hey, until next time, this is Pastor Nate, and you're watching Bridging the Gap. God bless you. We'll see you later.